Matador. Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to part 10 of our Final Fantasy V Pixel Remaster Platinum Trophy walkthrough. Uh, this is a really important episode, lots of good information here. It's a turning point in the story, and I know you're going to love it. And I want to take this moment to encourage you, if you have not done so already, please hit that subscribe button. I know only about 50% of the viewers of the series are subscribed, and I would hate for you to miss out on any of the great content that we've got, and also the future projects that I plan to bring you. So please take a moment, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Also, if you find that anything in this video is helpful to you, please also hit that like button and drop a comment down below letting me know what you find most useful in this series. Well, without further ado, let's get going. At the end of the last episode, we ended right outside of Castle Exteth, so we're going to walk inside. As a reminder, if you go around to the back part of the building, there is a consecrated circle as well as a healing spring that you can use to heal up, so feel free to use those if you need to. Uh, but now we're going to go back around all of these soldiers who are taking a little nap right here. And we're going to go into this door and up the stairs, and we'll find ourselves kind of in the main part of the Castle X Death. We'll start to get some enemies here. There's the Blind Wolves. Those are the ones out front. There's the Twin Lizard on the bottom and a Reflect Mage. As the name implies, Reflect Mages have the Reflect skill already set up on them, so don't try to hit them with any magical attacks unless you want them to bounce off. Um, one strategy that you can do is if you have Reflect on your team somehow, you can bounce those spells off of your characters and still hit someone with Reflect. You cannot reflect a reflected magic spell in Final Fantasy. So that is one strategy where you can still uh, hit an enemy if it has the Reflect status on it. Otherwise, just physical attacks work just fine. It does bounce its own attacks off of himself. They don't do a lot of damage, and you're definitely able to take those attacks. And then just keep pummeling away at it with any of your good physical attacks, any non-elemental things, and you should be all right. Moving on from here, we're just going to go to the right side of the room and you can get behind the wall here and there's a couple treasure chests that you can pick up. So go ahead and grab those. And then we'll go back into the center of the room and take the stairs going up. Here's a new enemy that we haven't seen yet. It's the Hellraiser. It's that little bunny in the back. And I would strongly encourage you to eliminate that one first because when it dies, it casts a rise, which will bring back one of the monsters that you've already defeated. However, if it's the only monster that's died so far, that will be useless. It won't be able to bring anything back to life. So uh, a little pro tip for you there. And then from there, it's just a matter of finishing off anything else. It gets really annoying when there are multiple of those Hellraisers that you fight because they'll try to just resurrect each other. So uh, I'm trying to kill them all at once with um, you know, big party attacks, hitting everything at once. That's probably the best way to take care of those ones. Okay, we're going to continue on up the stairs and walk around here. Um, there's a little pathway that you can take. And when you get to the end, you realize that it's kind of just a dead end area. There's not much you can do. So try to leave. Dead end, huh? Kryle, where are you going? There's nothing in here. No, there is. All of this is an illusion created by X-Death. What? Are you certain? Grandpa, give me strength. I see. Galif has fallen as well. Dorgan, Zazat, and Galif have all shuffled off this mortal coil. 
I fear I haven't much longer either. Lord Kelger. The time for that longest of rests draws closer. Who goes there? Gallif? Gallif, is that you? What? Krylas! Gallif, I understand. Everyone, lend me your strength. Lord Kelger, we must tear down the illusion X Death has created. This is my last wish and final command. Send all your power to X Death's castle. Lord Kelger. I see Grandpa and a wolf man. It must be Kelger. Their power, everyone's power is. Well, with everyone's power combined, we have changed Exet's castle into straight-up nightmare fuel. Well, we're also going to deal with a lot tougher enemies in this part of it, too. So the first one that you can encounter is the Magic Dragon. This one isn't so bad. We've dealt with things kind of like this before, all the way back by the original Temple of the Ancients area. Uh, this one's just a little bit tougher, has more HP. Um, and they can come in one or multiple in a battle. So uh, just use your normal physical attacks to take it down. Not a problem. We'll work your way around here. And you can see a switch on the other side of this wall. So flip that. And that gives you access to the treasure chest for an ice shield. That'll be a very important thing later. So make sure you grab that one. And then head down and wind your way around these different pathways. To eventually reach the stairs going up. And take them up. Well, from here, you can go up, and there's two ways you can proceed. You can go down the way that I'm showing you. You can walk all the way down and around here and back up. And you're probably going to encounter some new enemies here, like the Black Warlocks. These ones just love to inflict nasty status ailments across you. They're pretty much magical-based only. Um, they can also inflict instant death on you, so you definitely want to take those things out pretty quickly because that Reflect Mage isn't too much of a problem for you. Uh, so you can see it just confused one character. Luckily, uh, it's the one that heals, so we're not doing any damage to our own party, uh, but it is kind of annoying at the least. But a couple physical attacks is really all that it should take to eliminate any of these enemies so just work together to finish them all off and then we can move on Okay, keep heading up, and there's a treasure chest on the left. You could also just walk through a secret passage right here, and that'll save you a lot of time. Okay, in this next area, you will want to put on a time mage, 
Um, it doesn't have to be a permanent thing, but you need to be able to cast Float on your whole team. So, go ahead, cast Float on everyone, because we're going to be taking a little walk through the lava. And if you don't have Float on, then that character is going to take a lot of damage for whoever does not have Float. And then we can just go ahead and put our other job back on. And make sure all the equipment's good to go, and then we'll walk down into the lava, and then just hug the right wall here, and you'll be able to find a secret passage for a new bow, which we will gladly put on our ranger. Okay, and then we'll just head back up the lava, and we will now follow the path around. Also keep an eye out for these Bandercoworls, the dog-like enemies right out in front. These ones aren't so bad, but they do have the Blaster skill, which can eliminate one of your characters in one hit, just a one-hit kill, and it can also do things like paralyze them. Um, they're not a whole lot of fun to fight, however, neither is the Black Warlock in the back, so you can choose whichever threat you think is worst and try to take that one out first if you encounter a party composition like this. Uh, otherwise, just do your best to take them out with either physical attacks or magical attacks. Either one works just fine. Yep, there was that blaster that <laughs> eliminated Bart's. So, it happens, and if it does, just pick them back up and keep going. Okay, just continue following the path around. You'll ignore that staircase for right now and go up the path. There's a treasure chest up there. Here we have a couple of adamantite golems. They do hit pretty hard, so make sure that you're watching out for those incoming attacks. And they're pretty resilient. They've got 3,650 HP each, so they'll take a little while to work down. I tried using some ice magic on them, it wasn't very effective. Turns out that their weakness is actually lightning magic, so feel free to use any lightning based attacks to speed up the kill, otherwise just work them down little by little and you should be alright. Okay, after finally taking those guys out, you can go up, grab the treasure chest for an elixir, and then we'll just head back down and finally up those stairs that we passed before. Proceed ahead, and you'll see something kind of strange. There's a skull on the ground, and you're going to want to be a little bit careful in this area, only because there's some very strong monsters. We got the red dragons making a return from before. If you step on that red skull it will begin to move the platform back and forth and when you step off of the skull it will stop that platform if you land on a pillar what's going to happen is you'll have to get into a fight and you can fight some really nasty monsters i just got an abductor which isn't so bad um, but there are some other options that you can get as well that are randomly chosen it's probably a good idea to quick save before attempting this just in case you land on one of those pillars and get a fight that's kind of tough and that way you can just reset it and try again for um, one of the treasure chests on the side as well as the main path that we need in the middle. So we'll try that again, we'll let the platform go and we'll step off right in time 
in order for it to land on a treasure chest for the ice brand. We will take a moment just to quick save it, and then we'll start again. This time we're going for the chest on the right. And we can get the Kotetsu from that one. And of course, another quick save just for safety. And then stepping on the skull, it can be any of the, the three in the middle that you can land on and you can proceed from there. In the next room, we have a nice little consecrated circle. So feel free to uh, heal up if you need to and then proceed on. So here's one of those red dragons, and we fought one of these before, and we learned level 3 flare from it. If you didn't get it before in the barrier tower, you can get it now. And all you really need to do is to control it, and then cast, uh, get it to reflect that off of itself if you have a chemist with the mix skill, and you would mix a dragon fang and a phoenix down. So I just uh, controlled it, and I don't need to learn level 3 flare from it, but it's still weak to its own level 3 flare. So casting a few of those on itself, it will be able to eliminate it. It does have 7,500 HP, so it'll take just a little while to take that down. We are stronger now, so we're able to have the control do more damage. If you remember in Barrier Tower, it was doing just over a thousand damage, and now we're well over that. So uh, definitely nice to be able to uh, do more damage, and we don't have to cast that thing like seven or eight times to get it to die, only about three or four. Okay, so now we're going to go to the right, and there is a hidden passage that you can take to grab the treasure chest in that corner and then go back around here. We're going to go past this opening and all the way to the other side to grab one more treasure chest for 9,900 gil, and then head on up. Here's the yellow dragon. If you'll remember from the barrier tower how to take that out, you just want to control it, and hopefully you can get it to work the first time, otherwise it's liable to do a lot of damage to you. Uh, but once you control it, then all you need to do is use the Hurricane skill on itself, and that will put it into very critical HP. At that point, you just follow it up with one physical attack, and it will die. Okay, so that one's pretty easy. It's worse when there's two of them. You would just want to use that hurricane on the yellow dragon that you're not controlling and then kill that one off first. Well, proceeding up, we can see a lot of lava in the next room, but you just have to head up and down the staircases to get to this point. Once again, we're going to take a second to put float on all of our characters because we're going to be walking through that lava and we don't want to get burned and damaged from all of that. So. Take a moment, put float on everyone, make sure that your jobs are what you want them to be, and then we can proceed. In case you're wondering why I'm going at rangers and red mages, it's only because I want my rangers to eventually learn the rapid fire skill, and I want the red mages to get dual cast. So those are the high level skills there, and we're going to be learning those at some point. Down in this room, in the lava here, we've encountered these iron fists. They're pretty tough. They can use this counterattack to do some serious damage to us, but uh, we're just going to focus on one of them and then move on to the next one. We definitely want to eliminate these guys as quickly as possible because they are very, very tough hitters. The Ranger really helps in these kind of fights too, because as you can see, we can attack the enemy in the back row. We don't get any um, problems for either us being in the back row or the enemy being in the back row. <coughs> Normally you would suffer a damage penalty to your physical attacks for attacking from or to the back row. However, that's not the case uh, when you have a long range weapon like a bow. This Black Warlock is pretty annoying when it you know instantly kills your character or petrifies them so 
Um, yeah, you can actually take control of them and you can have them kill themselves with death. So that's a quick way to eliminate them if you can get control to stick. Okay, we're going to continue all the way to the right through the lava. There's a staircase against the right wall. Go up and grab the treasure chest for 8,000 gil. And we just so happen to get the money bag trophy because now we have a lot of money. After grabbing that treasure chest, head back downstairs and we'll go back through the lava to the long staircase that we did not take before. In this room, we see a lot more of those skulls and we've got to make it across and you can see that some skulls, they make the floor go away. So just follow the path that I'm taking. You go down slightly and then you pop up to grab the treasure chest and then work your way to the top and that will teleport you over here to this kind of glowing orb thing. This is very similar to when we fought Shiva, and this is in fact another summon that we'll be able to get. Well, I'll teach you the trick for how to eliminate this thing, and it comes with the Mystic Knight. You want to grab a Mystic Knight, and I would actually recommend putting on aim for this, because with aim, you're not going to be missing, and uh, it makes it kind of annoying when you set it up and you end up missing your great attack to try to one-hit kill this thing. Um, however, just make sure that you have a mystic knife. The other people don't really matter for this because we're going to ideally kill this thing in only two turns. I do it in three, but I'll show you how to do that. So a quick save right beforehand and talk to the orb. I'll join you if you're stronger than me. Come on, show me what you got. Here we have Carbuncle, and all we really need to do is with our Mystic Knight, we're going to cast Bio as the spell blade. And Bio will enchant our blade with poison damage. And this boss is very, very weak to it. We normally can't just cast it on it because it has innate reflect, so it's bouncing everything back. We do have the ice shields as well equipped on our uh, on our Mystic Knight and that is absorbing any ice damage that comes our way. It's going to be very important in a future fight that we're going to show you. Uh, but now just attack the Carbuncle enemy with your Mystic Knight with the Enchanted Blade and it should kill it in one hit. If you had aim, you'd probably hit it the first time. Uh, I just happened to miss it, so it doesn't really matter. It's still dead in one hit and that saves you a huge headache of trying to eliminate that enemy while it's bombarding you with um, powered up spells because spells that are reflected are stronger. You kids are strong after all. This could be good for a laugh. And we received the summon monster carbuncle. Okay, from this point, let's head downstairs and we're going to keep heading down. We'll get teleported right down to the lower part of the room. And now we're going to be hunting for a new uh, monster down here. And we're going to uh, now show you that if you put aim on, it definitely helps out with your spell blades so that you don't miss. So walk around here until you see a blue dragon. These things are super nasty and I hate them. But if you enchant yourself with break, you're able to petrify them in one hit. I did summon Cato Blepus because if you get it to hit, you can instantly petrify one of them. I wasn't able to do it. Now with that ice shield equipped as well, we are now absorbing all of the blue dragon's magic. It uses only ice magic against us, so we're able to absorb that and that's going to keep us alive, whereas the rest of our team is not going to be so lucky. But that doesn't matter for the B series. We only need one person to stay alive for it, and that's going to be our Mystic Knight. So there's the first attack with our spell blade, uh, automatically inflicting break on it. It's petrified and out of the battle. And now every time our ATB bar fills up, we're going to use aim and take out another one. And just repeat that until they're all dead. And we get a big chunk of experience because, well, we only had one person living there. Okay, when you head back up, now we have to get to the bottom part of the skull section. So work your way down using the path that I'm showing you. 
and that opens up the pathway again and you can just proceed down the stairs. In the next room you can use the consecrated circle and we're going to take a quick look at the bestiary to make sure that we've got everything that we need to from here. So scroll way down and we're going to go down Start looking at number 123. You should have the Twin Lizard, Blind Wolf, Hellraiser, Reflect Mage, Magic Dragon, Black Warlock, Adamantite Golem, Pandercoral, Iron Fist, Blue Dragon, Red Dragon, and Yellow Dragon. If you've got all of those, then you're good to go. I also switched up my party composition to have a Thief that also knows Blue Magic. I have a Black Mage. I have a uh, Red Mage who can do the curing, and I have a Dragoon, who can use the jump skill. And once we're all saved up, we're going to go up into the next room, walk straight up to grab the treasure chest that seems empty, but it actually triggers an optional boss fight, which is good for um, a couple trophies that we need for the Platinum. So make sure you open that one up, and then go to the right and proceed up the stairs. There are two treasure chests up in this area, so open one for the Partisan, and a Fuma Shuriken in the other one, and then head back down. So we've collected all 15 treasure chests in this whole dungeon, and there are no hidden items, and then go up the stairs. Ah, uh, geez, not Gilgamesh again. Haha, -ha, looking for something? Well, guess what? I already took the treasure. Oh, you guys are so burned. That's right, we have another Gilgamesh battle, and this time we are going to start by casting Golem on ourselves with our Black Mage slash Summoner, and this one is able to really just absorb most of the physical attacks that are coming our way from Gilgamesh. We're going to be very safe and secure having uh, the Golem protect us with his sandy hand there. Um, other than that, he's going to try to inflict a lot of status conditions on us, so we're going to have our red mage slash white mage be able to use Asuna on us, and also that healing staff can heal us if necessary. Um, other than that, we're just going to cycle through a couple things. We're going to have our thief use the blue magic spell Thousand Needles to do a guaranteed thousand damage against him. We'll keep summoning Titan with our Black Mage Summoner, and we're going to keep using Jump with the Dragoon. And if anything happens to one of our party members, we'll have an Asuna ready to take care of it. So we get hit by Lilliputian Lyric, got turned to mini, but we're going to take it away with an Asuna. And that's gonna be the basic pattern for this whole fight. Thousand Needles, Titan, Jump, and just repeat those until the next phase of the battle. Already, our fourth rumble. I must say, I quite enjoy these tussles. I feel we've gained an understanding. An understanding that... 
I will pound you silly! Ha <laughs> ha! Say, what happened to that spry old fellow? He, he fought X-Death and... I see. Enough expository banter. Now we fight like men and the ladies and ladies who dress like men. For Gilgamesh, it's morphing time. Now that it's mine, let's see how good this Excalibur really is. Make sure that you steal the Genji Helm off of him as soon as he transforms into this next mode here um, when he gains more hands and weapons. Once you successfully steal that off of him, then go ahead and just start attacking normally using the same pattern we've been using this whole time. Have at you! Why, I've been had! This is far from being the strongest of swords. I feel so betrayed. Gilgamesh! Er you worthless fool! For your continued bungling, I banish you from this dimension. W what No! Anything but that! Silence! Cast into the void. No! And with no more enemy to fight, the battle's over. And we get the Excalipor sword. Okay, we're going to go back to the Consecrated Circle in the room below us. And we're going to switch up our party members so that everyone is a blue mage. Doesn't really matter what the secondary skills are so much because we're going to absolutely rock this next boss's world. And once you're all saved up, then go ahead and proceed up through the staircase and then through this corridor to get to another scene. Do not interfere. X-Death, no way we'll let you get away with this. Mwahahahaha. <laughs> Have you even the slightest idea what I plan to get away with? What? Well, no, but... You all fight so fiercely, yet you have no idea of the truth. Allow me to enlighten you. I will return the Earth to how it used to be. You mean you'll turn it into a world full of evil? Believe what you wish. 
simple-minded fools such as yourself could never hope to understand my motives. It matters not. I will tolerate no more interruptions. And we have a battle with Xdeath now. It begins the battle by casting Doom, and this gives you 30 seconds to live. This is actually a blue magic, and he only casts it on one of you, and then every so often, every nine turns, he will cast it again. But we wanted to learn it, and by making everyone into a blue mage, we are guaranteed to learn that. And then we also have level three flare that we've learned from that red dragon, and Exeth just happens to be a multiple of level three. So we can keep using level three flare over and over again, and this battle will be over before you know it. So once everyone casts level three flare, then go ahead and initiate auto battle, and you'll win the fight just like that. He really can't do a whole lot against you. So Cryo started with 30 seconds to live, and she still has 24, so only 6 in-game seconds really passed in that time. So very quick and easy battle that we can also learn Doom from. Oh no! The crystals! They're breaking apart! Look! Is that Castle Tycoon? We're back home! And we get the return home trophy for defeating Xdeath and his castle. And now we've made it to the next part of the game, which is actually the merged world. So we've had Worlds 1 and Worlds 2, and now we put them together into the merged world. And indeed, Castle Tycoon is just ahead of us there, so let's go inside of it. And just walk all the way up until you get to the throne room for a scene with the Chancellor. Princess Lena, Princess Cerisa, welcome home! Father, he... The king's passing was a great loss. However, we must do our best to continue on without him. Furthermore, Princess Cerisa has returned when we thought her dead. It is cause for a celebration. Cerisa, my true name. Yes, my lady. The name Papa gave me. Hey, what are you doing? Preparations for the banquet are complete. Of course, your acquaintances are welcome to attend.
What? You want me to go out there? Just like this? Are you mad? Come now, princess. Ah. Oh. She she's gorgeous. Wow, she really is. Barts, I think you're blushing. I I, I am not. Now that we have control of Bart's again, let's head on to the south and we can um, go talk to Kryle. Grandpa. Hey Kryle, how are you holding up? Alright, it's not so painful anymore, but I just feel so anxious. It's like Grandpa is fussing at us to hurry somewhere. Hmm. I might have an idea. Come on, let's go. Huh? What? We're back in my world. There's got to be a reason for that, right? Let's find out what it is. Okay. So now we'll go back into the castle and we will try to leave out the southern exit. What about Ferris and Lena? No way they can slip away right now. Okay, and we'll actually leave out the bottom this time. So keep heading south and exit all the way to the world map. I beg your pardon. I was just rushing over to tell everyone the bridge over the Western River is complete. Boko might still be over in that cave to the west. Boko? He's my chocobo and my best friend. Oh, really? What, you don't believe me? Well, you're so poor at writing Windrakes. Hey, you cheeky little... Ow! Take this! Oh, jeez, I can't win against this kid. Okay, so from here, what you're going to do is head to the west. So go down through this little passageway here, across the desert, over the bridge, and north to find the cave. Once inside, head up for a scene. Boko! Quee! Hello, I'm Kryle. Huh? You speak Chocobo? Just a little. I think he wants to introduce us to someone. Huh? For real? He says this is his wife. Her name's Coco. Boko, you've been busy, huh? Listen, Boko, I've got a favor to ask. Quah! He says he already knows. Really? He guessed you'd be leaving on another journey. Boko, is that okay? I know you've settled down now. What's he saying? He says that he loves her. Boko. 
and that while he's away, to take care of the chicks. Chicks? Coco has little ones on the way. She says she'll be waiting here for him. Coco, thanks, and don't worry, we'll come back safe. Quack! Alright, and now let's head back toward Castle Tycoon, but we're not actually going to go inside of it. Instead, our destination lies a little bit to the north of there. So when you get back here by the forest, go around the castle, go north, and then we're going to go a little bit to the west, crossing over this river. And then you're just going to hug this mountain range here on the bottom, and you'll work your way through a passageway. Going around here, you'll find the city of Tool. You don't have to go in there yet, but then go down into this little broken rocky area and keep heading south. Ow! If you hadn't been riding so fast... Boko, I say this is all your fault. Quack, quack, quack! Don't take it out on him. There's nothing he could have done. Barts, what's that? And here we have a battle against an ant lion, a returning enemy from many other Final Fantasy games. Uh, this one, we're just going to use a couple tactics on it. We're going to use some form of magic. I just used Diamond Dust here for a little extra damage. But then we're just going to attack it with a thousand needles. We still have two blue mages, so we're able to do that with both characters. And we're just going to pummel it with the thousand needles over and over until it's dead. So pretty easy boss fight. And once you do enough damage, it will just take off. Stuck in a monster's nest. Great. Just great. I don't think it's very great at all. Now what do we do? Quack! We'll head on up toward the north. You can talk to Boko if you want. And a rope comes out of nowhere. We'll try to grab it. And again and again. Do you promise never to pull something like that again? Willing to admit you are wrong to leave without me? <laughs> Come on, get up here. Ferris. Which one of you decided to maroon me back there? Oh, who cares? 
Try it again and you'll swing from a yard arm. But what happened? Why'd you come after us? I'm just not cut out for being a princess, I'm afraid. Pirating's much more my style. Ouch! What's wrong? Owie, I think I got a splinter. Don't worry about it. Ferris joined the party. Okay, from here, all you have to do is head south, and we're going to work our way to this little cave here. And we can go right on inside. This is Guido's cave. So go right on up and we'll head on all the way north until we get to a scene. Guido? Alley oop! Oh, thank you. I suppose you can be helpful after all. The shock of the two worlds merging sent everything topsy-turvy, including me. I'm a bit too old to do much of my back, I rue. What do you mean, worlds merging? I see you're just as slow on the uptake as before. It's an ancient legend, but I had never imagined it was true. According to this legend, a thousand years ago, Bartz's world and Kryle's world were one and the same. The same? It seems there is quite the echo in here. But why did the world split? To seal the void. The void? I fear no matter how often I allude to your ignorance, my dry wit just goes over your head, so I will simply explain. One thousand years ago, there existed Inuo, a presence of the strongest evil. Inuo created the void and possessed the power to control it. After a long and harrowing battle, the people were able to defeat Inuo using the twelve legendary weapons. However, the void could not be erased. As a last resort, the people split the crystals into two. To maintain balance, the world split into two as well. The void was sealed within the space between the two worlds, a place called the Interdimensional Rift. That means Exteth was telling the truth. He really did want to return the world to how it used to be. However, without the crystals, the wind's power will never return nor that of the earth, fire, or water. Ouch! Oh, this splinter really hurts! X-Death! Mwahahaha! I turned myself into a tiny splinter waiting for just this moment. Now you can understand my true goal to take the sealed power of the void for my own. What? Why do you think I merged the worlds together? Mwahahaha! Oh, now that the two worlds are one, the interdimensional rift is emerging, along with the void that was sealed within it. Wait, slow down. Are you saying that this void, whatever that is, is coming here? 
Yes, the void shall be released from its thousand year prison and into my keeping. The matchless power of the void will be mine. Not a chance, X Death. Castle Tycoon. Lena. Behold, isn't it beautiful? Gaze upon the unlimited power of the void. Watch as it engulfs all in its path. Soon it will belong to me. Lena, Exteth, you! Peons, tremble before my might. <laughs> I'll enjoy turning you inside out. Die! Turtle! Not bad for a reptile. You think I sat around seven centuries munching on pizza? Ha ha ha, perhaps you should have taken the chance. You shall find no such tasty diversions in the afterlife. Peons, tremble before my might. <laughs> oh, my aching shell. Guido, you okay? X death, that cur. He must be stopped before he obtains the full power of the void, or... Hmm? By Jove, what's that? Just the Library of the Ancients. The Library of the Ancients? My dear boy, have you any idea what an important place that is? Oh, of course you don't. To think that the Library of the Ancients was here the whole time. Follow close, children. Within the library is a book that will tell us how to defeat Exdeath. Sage Guido! Oho, scholars from Sergate. We found the second half of the sealed tome. Perfect. Now, let us begin the strategy meeting. As you have probably noticed, the two worlds have recombined into one. Furthermore, the Void is trying to break free from where it has been sealed within the rift. Then we'd better hurry there and stop it. Don't be so headstrong, lad. Along with the Void, many fearsome creatures were also sealed in the rift a millennium ago. They were all unimaginably evil and incredibly strong. I feel safe in saying that as you are now, you kids wouldn't stand a chance. Then what do we do? 
elementary, my dear Barts, use the legendary weapons that helped defeat Inuo a thousand years ago. Legendary weapons? Sometimes I wonder if you say things like this to spite me. Yes, the twelve legendary weapons. They are weapons. They are legendary. There are even twelve of them. Now that we have both halves of the sealed tome, if all goes according to legend, and I'm certain it will, the book will show us the way. The book? It is written, when nothing's power again does peak, to warriors of light this book shall speak. The book begins to speak. Following Inuo's defeat, the weapons of legend were sealed within Castle Kuza. To break the seals, the four tablets must be assembled. One rests alongside spirits of the past, blessed by the soil. One rests within an island shrine, kissed by wind. One rests beneath the ocean's floor, engulfed by flames. One rests beyond the river's torrents, protected by water. These four tablets are the keys that will break the seals, but standing guard beside them are our servants. If the tablets are moved, our servants will awaken. The ultimate spells of white and black, the magic of time and space, Meteor, the ruler of the seas, Leviathan, and Bahamut, king of dragons. Present this book before each gate and the way to the seals will be opened. Received Sealed Tome Go, unseal the twelve legendary weapons before Exteth gains the power of the void. We are all counting on you. The first tablet, blessed by the soil and the spirits of the past. Eureka, it must be the pyramid in the desert of shifting sands. Ferris, Kryle, and even you, Bartz, you must go at once. The future of the world depends on it. Once you gain control of your character, feel free to use the pot to restore your HP and MP. And then we're going to go up to the roof here and talk to the guy on the right. And we're going to learn a new song for our bard. And it's the Mana's Paean. Manas Pan, this melody's mysterious power increases the magical might of those who hear it. So, pretty good. Now we're going to head down and outside. And at this moment, I just want to thank you all for following along. It's been a really fun time going through this with you. Make sure that you subscribe and also hit that like button if you learned something. And leave me a comment letting me know what you think of this series. Just so you know, my plans are hopefully to tackle Final Fantasy IV when this one's over, and that should lead us right up until when Final Fantasy XVI comes out, and i like to hit that one the day that it releases. So uh, just look forward to all that, and stay tuned, because we've got a lot more good stuff coming your way. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and have a good day.